This was my first FBL draft, which somehow still looks very good. Okay. Then I updated it to this. Not bad. Then I updated it to this. Mmm, better. And now I have updated it to this. Minus the players I've transferred out, obviously. Where I have now taken out a Saka, Muniz, and Konsa, and brought in the likes of Havertz, Eze, and Pedro Porro. Hey, that's pretty damn good. So that now gives me a very, very sexy team that looks like this. Damn son. So I've got the two premiums in Salah and Son, where Salah could become Palmer at any time. Son could become the likes of Saka or Foden at any time. Eze and Nkunku are great value mids who could be any other midfielder at that price point. Then the front line, honest day, could be the best front line in the entire game. But also... Apart from Haaland, they are the three most expensive forwards, so I could go down to any other forward in the game too. Apart from Haaland. But who even needs him, right? And then in the defence, I also have Arsenal cover in Raya, Man City cover with Gavardiol, Poro, who is one of the most attacking defenders, and a Crystal Palace and Fulham rotation with Anderson and Robinson. So this team literally has everything. Apart from Haaland. Ah. <laughs> so yes, I am still a cheeky scrub and don't have Haaland, and I am actually yet to have a serious draft with him in as well. But, but, the closer we get to game week one, the more he is actually tickling my pickle and I finally might cave in and get him. Damn. <laughs> Unlucky! And that's not because of FOMO. It's not because I'm a cheeky scrub making drafts for content. <clears throat> I would never do that. Shots fired. But it's mainly for the fact the more expensive players like Saka, Foden, Palmer and all them that you would have instead of Haaland all might get their minutes managed over the Euros and some of the other players as well like Trent. We don't know if he's ready. Meanwhile, Haaland has literally been on low power mode all summer and is a fully charged robot. So do you really want to go without them? So with that being said, if I were to make a Haaland team, it would probably probably look something like this. Ooh. <laughs> Where it would mean I would be removing the likes of Salah, Son, Gavardiol, Eze and Havertz, that's uh, some pretty good players, for the likes of Saka, Jota, Johnson, Mikulenko and Haaland. Now obviously some of these players could be any other player at the same price point, but this is what is teasing me right here if I do want a Haaland in here. Saka is, you know, Saka, he's probably better than Havertz, and you'd be happier to keep him longer term. Jota could outscore Salah when he's playing, and it looks like he will be playing in game week one, and is investing 12.5 million in Salah when we don't really know how he's going to play under slot yet. A good idea? Maybe not. Johnson could actually be better than Son, and the fact that I'm not keeping him long term, could Johnson be a better option than Son? And Gavardiol could always be a rotation rest, so is he actually worth that money at the start? Hey, that just sounds like I'm trying to convince myself with a Haaland draft. But if you look right here, it could arguably be better than my other draft. Oh dear. <laughs> so this right here is my current draft. And this right here could be my current draft if I want Haaland. Mm. Now I do feel like for just game week one and two, this Haaland draft is actually much sexier. And most people would probably agree that a team like this actually does look better for the start of the season. And also, you know, you have Haaland, so that sounds like a pretty good thing. But I think this draft would be much better for planning and making future transfers, as you just have a lot more different ways to get in pretty much every other player apart from Haaland. You have a Salah and a Son who could become any other premium mid. I could afford some of the higher priced mids and defenders, and it is super flexible to jump on any of the early bandwagons, which always happens. So yeah, that is pretty lovely stuff. Meanwhile, with this Haaland draft, if Haaland and Saka are popping off and I don't want to get rid of them, then that's pretty much my team locked. I won't be able to get in the likes of a Palmer, a Salah, a Son, a Trent or anyone like that, where it lacks flexibility that much that I probably end up pulling a muscle in real life trying to stretch them in this team. So Haaland draft to no Haaland draft isn't really about Haaland or no Haaland. I think if you go without Haaland, you've got to stick without Haaland. But then you have a potentially more balanced team, not just for now, but moving forward as well. And if you choose Haaland, I think you've got to stick with Haaland. But it might be pretty damn hard to make future transfers later on down the line. So that is why right now I'm slightly leaning towards this team without Haaland. But let me know what you think of my current draft right here. And let me know if you think the Haaland draft also looks better. Which team are you on? Haaland or no Haaland? That's going to be all for today. Thanks for watching. And also, remember... <laughs> Don't be a cheeky scrub. Subscribe to Nathan Bacon right now. <laughs>
Ha, 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 ha,